his back to the gallows, his face turned toward his judge, who was the head of the camp. The boy was pale, but seemed more moved than afraid. His manacled hands did not tremble. His eyes gazed coldly at the hundreds of SS guards, the thousands of prisoners who surrounded him. The head of the camp began to read his verdict, hammering out each phrase. In the name of Himmler, prisoner number, stole during the alert. According to the law, paragraph, prisoner number is condemned to death. May this be warning and an example to all prisoners. No one moved. I could hear my heart beating. The thousands who had died daily at Auschwitz and at Birkenau in the crematory ovens no longer troubled me. But this one, leaning against his gallows, he overwhelmed me. Do you think this ceremonial will be over soon? I'm hungry, whispered Juliak. At a sign from the head of the camp, the logger capo advanced toward the condemned man. Two prisoners helped him in his task for two plates of soup. The capo wanted to bandage the victim's eyes, but he refused. After a long moment of waiting, the executioner put the rope round his neck. He was on the point of motioning to his assistants to draw the chair away from the prisoner's feet when the latter cried in a calm, strong voice, Long live liberty! A curse upon Germany! A curse! A curse! The executioners had completed their task. A command cleft the air like a sword. Bear your heads. 10,000 prisoners paid their last respects. Cover your heads. Then the whole camp, block after block, had to march past the hanged man and stare at the dimmed eyes, the lulling tongue of death. The capos and heads of each block forced everyone to look him full in the face. After the march, we were given permission to return to the blocks for our meal. I remember that I found the soup excellent that evening. I witnessed other hangings. I never saw a single one of the victims weep. For a long time, those dried up bodies had forgotten the bitter taste of tears. Except once, the Aberkapo of the 52nd cable unit was a Dutchman, a giant well over six feet. 700 prisoners worked under his orders and they all loved him like a brother. No one had ever received a blow at his hands nor an insult from his lips. He had a young boy under him, a pipple, as they were called, a child with a refined and beautiful face, unheard of in this camp. At Buna, the pipple were loath. They were often crueler than adults. I once saw one of 13 beating his father because the latter had not made his bed properly. The old man was crying softly while the boy shouted, If you don't stop crying at once, I shan't bring you any more bread. Do you understand? But the Dutchman's little servant was loved by all. He had the face of a sad angel. One day, the electric power station at Buna was blown up. The Gestapo summoned to the spot suspected sabotage. They found a trail. It eventually led to the Dutch Aberkapo, and there, after a search, they found an important stock of arms. The Aberkapo was arrested immediately. He was tortured for a period of weeks, but in vain. He would not give a single name. He was transferred to Auschwitz. We never heard of him again. But his little servant had been left behind in the camp in prison, also put to torture. He too would not speak. Then the SS sentenced him to death with two other prisoners who had been discovered with arms. One day, when we came back from work, we saw three gallows rearing up in the assembly place. Three black crows. Roll call. SS all around us. Machine guns train. The traditional ceremony. Three victims in chains and one of them. The little servant. The sad-eyed angel. The SS seemed more preoccupied. 
more disturbed than usual. To hang a young boy in front of thousands of spectators was no light matter. The head of the camp read the verdict. All eyes were on the child. He was lividly pale, almost calm, biting his lips. The gallows threw its shadows over him. This time, the Lager Capo refused to act as executioner. Three SS replaced him. The three victims mounted together onto the chairs. The three necks were placed at the same moment within the nooses. Long live liberty, cried the two adults. But the child is si was silent. Where is God? Where is he? Someone behind me asked. At a sign from the head of the camp, the three chairs were tipped over. Total silence throughout the camp. On the horizon, the sun was setting. Bear your heads, yelled the head of the camp. His voice was raucous. We were weeping. Cover your heads. Then the march past began. The two adults were no longer alive. Their tongues hung swollen, blue-tinged. But the third rope was still moving. Being so light, the child was still alive. For more than half an hour, he stayed there struggling between life and death, dying in slow agony under our eyes. And we had to look him full in the face. He was still alive when I passed in front of him. His tongue was still red. His eyes were not yet glazed. Behind me, I heard the same man asking, Where is God now? And I heard a voice within me answer him, Where is he? Here he is. He is hanging here on this gallows. That night, the soup tasted of corpses. <laughs>